course, in psychology, uh, you know, the problem, uh, I don't know what would be the parallel in shamanism, but in psychology the problem is that we have a wide, wide spectrum of schools and there is basically no agreement as to what are the basic uh, motivating forces in the psyche, why the symptoms come, uh, what the symptoms mean, and then tremendous disagreement what you should do for for therapy. So yeah, I you think have you a, have a much harder job because if you we, have, yeah. we use course shamanism and we use the basic principles that already have been worked out. Yeah. So if you have a you know problem you can flip a coin, you can choose a psychological or psychotherapeutic school and each of them will tell you something else and ask you to do something else. So it's enormously s simplifies it if you can connect with this inner healer and well, you simply but, support uh, yeah. what is happening. Now, one of the nice things about uh, shamanism is that uh, if you do die, you don't have to blame yourself. But if you're an inner healer and you die, did you fail? Mm -hmm. uh, what does that say about the inner healing model? Everybody fails in the end, I'm just asking. Well, if you consider it a failure, I mean... Uh, <laughs> That's a perfect answer. Yeah. That's very yeah, good. I mean, if you were a Tibetan, I mean, that's your big opportunity, you know, for uh, not just healing, but for stepping out of the, of the cycle of death, rebirth altogether. That's so. a magnificent answer. Mm -hmm. But then the question is, why bother to heal at all? And well, um, <laughs> you know, um, people have experiences of uh, going back to the to the creative principle, whichever way you want to call it. Uh, Not God. Brahman, the Tao. We can't say God. Uh, you can say God. Can we say Great Spirit? Sure. Okay. Uh, that, um, you know, the, we see it as the, as the ultimate goal of the spiritual journey to, uh, in, in certain systems, to go there and then sort of merge with the, yeah. with the creative principle, with the divine. But when you get there, when you have the experience, you realize there's a problem, because if that were all there is, and it would be all that great, the creation would never happen. I mean, the, that creative principle would just stay in this undifferentiated state, and would never. Uh, well, I know you've been else. there, and I've so. been there too, and it's awfully nice. And when I'm there, I don't care what happens. So it becomes, the creation becomes like an adventure in consciousness. It's like I don't a, care if they do any more creation or not. Do you, when you're there? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, I think there is a sense that there should be something, something complementing it. Uh, you know, in Kabbalah they talked about the fact that uh, God created the world out of boredom that there was a kind of a monotony in that uh, undifferentiated state and that uh, or the, the Hindus talk about Leela, it's a kind of, it's a cosmic movie. It's a, it's well, a, I, it's I have a, another suggestion. Uh, it's wonderful to hear you talk. And, uh, uh, but this business of merging, whether it's with an animal or with a deity or with uh, uh, other aspects of the cosmos, and ultimately, in my own experience, uniting with uh, the, the, the great hidden universe, or whatever we want to call it, uh, I, great spirit is okay, but I don't personalize it, and I don't think you do either, probably. Uh, that for the, and, and you can have experiences of dying, and uh, you're told to come back to do your work. And what you've done, you've uh, merged with this tremendous power you talked about, but you can bring it back to alleviate, as a healer, human suffering and alleviate pain. Uh, and you bring back this compassion you encounter. I, I'd like to come back to that, whether you, uh, the subject of compassion. But it seems to me that it is not a, a dead end. Uh, it may be when you die, it may not be, but for the shaman, it's a, it's a, it's a teaching experience, it's an experience of merging with power and bringing that power for uh, application here. Uh, does that, any of that resonate with your students or your work? Very much so. I think, you know, this feel a connection to, to Buddhism, to the difference between Hinayana and Mahayana 
Buddhism, like in the Hinayana Buddhism, the original Buddhism, the idea was that this this uh, is a kind of a uh, realm of suffering, and you want to you want to check out, you want to go out, uh, reach Nirvana. Nirvana is a term that's related to wind and means basically evanescence, the, the blowing off the torches of life, sort of you know moving into. Uh, non-existence and achieving a personal uh, liberation. But then in Mahayana, where you have the, the ideal or the archetype of uh, the Bodhisattva, the idea is that uh, you come close to that experience, but then you come back and you help, you help others. So in Mahayana, you can reach, uh, you can reach uh, Nirvana um, not by leaving the world, but by reducing significantly what they call three poisons, which is aggression, your aggression towards others, anger. Uh, the second one would be um, uh, desire leading to attachment. And the third one would be uh, avidya, which means ignorance, not really not understanding who you are, not understanding the nature. Uh, and of, of course, reality. that's Tibetan Buddhism, and it's heavily influenced by shamanism in itself. Yes, so it's Tibetan a, Buddhism, in a way, uh, is already a synthesis to some mm -hmm. degree. Yeah. In, in Tibetan Buddhism, you have, for example, a lot of a uh, lot of the of the element of dismemberment and yeah, so yeah. on and sacrifice. It comes from the Bon yeah. uh, Bon tradition. Yeah. Uh, so there's a real real connection there between uh, the you know the Eastern spiritual philosophies and. Uh, and shamanism. We actually see people in the breastwork whose experiences would be repeatedly shamanic. Mm -hmm. You know, normally the experiences can go in different directions. So people who repeatedly have experiences that are shamanic and then very frequently with very, very fascinating uh, synchronicities. So we did a training in a place called Pocket Ranch, which is in Geyserville, north of San Francisco. It's, uh, you know, in a very wooded area in, in the mountains. And this one woman in the workshop had a powerful experience of, uh, uh, or with uh, an owl, and identified this owl as the spirit animal. And then immediately after the session went for a walk and actually found remnants of a, an uh, owl and brought it back. And then the next day the workshop ended and she was driving home and she noticed that something was moving on the side of the road, and there was a big uh, uh, the uh, horned owl wounded. And so she stopped the car and went, and the owl would let her to, to pick him or her up, take home, and sort of nurse to, uh, to health. So, you know, that doesn't happen every day. That, uh, uh, so some some uh, of the people really choose the in the breathwork the shamanic journey or in in uh, in uh, psychedelic uh, work.